This demonstration will show you how to sign into the TinTap system in order to file and pay your business tax return. First of all, if you already have an existing TinTap logon, please type your username and password in the area provided here and then click the logon box. If you do not have a TinTap logon, you'll need to create one under the New to TinTap area to create the logon form. Let's go ahead and type in the person's username and password. This person has already established TinTap access and has items to complete on TinTap. These are indicated by orange triangles, perhaps in this case adding a mailing address. But for now, we'll demonstrate the filing of the business tax return. So in the lower left corner, you'll notice another orange triangle by business tax. Please click on the words business tax and you'll be directed to the business tax filing area. We see here that we need to file a business tax return for December of 2020. And to do so, we come down here to the middle find the orange triangle and say file return. By clicking on the return option, we go to the screens that allow us to input the information needed in order to file. We'll answer the first question. Do we have gross sales to report? The answer will be yes. Clicking yes, it asks if we will be uploading a CSV file this is not very typical. This would be through computer software, and uh, most people do not use this. So the answer to this is normally no. We click on Next to proceed. We see here that Billy's Bike Shop has two different locations. One of them is in Nashville, and the other in Murfreesboro. As we can see here, we will owe business tax for Davidson County and Nashville, as well as Rutherford County and Murfreesboro. So let's do the first one by clicking on the location ID in the left column. By clicking on this location ID, we must make other selections on the next screen. In this case, Billy's Bike Shop is a retailer. So we click the retailer box to indicate that that is the case. This will set the rates for Davidson County and for Nashville. And we will also indicate that we have gross sales to report for this location. For our example here, we will not indicate that we have any deductions to report. We will say that we have county personal property tax and city personal property tax to report. So the first thing we do is to complete the tax computation by location. So remember, we're only working on the location that is located in Nashville and Davidson County. So in this particular case, we've got county sales, and we will put that we earned $20,000 for that location. As we proceed through, we said we would not use any deductions. Notice the math has already completed its information down here a little further. Bringing this up here a little bit for you. The county personal property tax, which is not real estate tax, it is personal property tax assessed by the property assessor. We will say that that is $150 on the county side. And for, for Nashville, that would be considered to be the general services district tax. So as we click through here, we notice that that's too much. We, our tax was only $38, and we are limited to only 50% of this amount that is indicated here. So 50% of $38 is our limit. So we will indicate that that is $19, which is the maximum that we can claim. So it allowed that once we made that change. It brought the minimum tax down to the minimum of $22, which is indicated here on line six. So as you go through here, we have other deductions that would be available for us, but we're not going to address those at this time. 
The next thing we need to continue to do in that this location is at a location within a city is we need to continue to look at the information here. So the gross sales was brought down automatically by 10 tap. The city tax was calculated. Now on line 11, the amount of city personal property tax paid. Okay. So uh, we know already that we are limited to it, only half of the amount. So whatever that amount would be, we'll make believe it's $19 again is our maximum. So we'll go ahead and claim that here. So the total city business tax due is $22, making the total due for that location for $44. We click OK because we have all of our figures input for that location. And as we go back here, we see that this has been checked off. We no longer have a to-do item. But we do have an exclamation point for the bike shop in Murfreesboro. So we will click on this location ID and we will do the very same thing we just did. The retailer rate, we see the rates have come through here. We do have gross sales to report. And in our demonstration here, we'll show that we do not have any deductions to report. And again, we will report some county and some city tax. Okay. So for the shop in Murfreesboro, let's say that's $40,000. Deductions, we said we would not have any. Gross sales is automatically computed. The tax for that would be $75. We will claim our county property tax for Rutherford County, and we will say that we only had to claim $5. This reduced the tax to $70. For the city, the same amount is brought down. We said we would have no deductions. As you look down a little further, it allows us to put the city of Murfreesboro's personal property tax in as well. And we will say that that is $7. And that reduces the city part of that tax to 68. So 70 plus 68 equals 138. And that is the amount of tax that is owed for this location. So as we click on that, we go back to the main screen and we see that both locations are completely filled out. We click on Next to proceed. We reach the summary screen that shows the total amount of tax due is $182. If we had a credit on file with the Department of Revenue, we would claim that here. We are filing a timely return, so we do not owe any penalty or interest, making the total tax of $182 the correct amount. We'll click on Next to proceed. Once we get to the next page, we get to the Payments section. This allows you to determine exactly how much you're paying and if you're going to pay by ACH or if you're going to use a credit card. ACH is through your checking account or your savings account at your financial institution. Most people choose this option because there are no extra fees involved with the ACH option. So if you choose yes, you click on the yes box and then a screen comes up that allows you to type in your banking information. So you would put in your bank account type, being a checking account as an example here, the routing number for your bank, your bank account number, you confirm this, you can save this payment channel for future use if you wish, you do not have to do that. And then you indicate over here and confirm the amount that you're actually paying. Once you complete this, you'll be asked to type in your password once again so that you can certify that you have indeed made the correct payment. One other thing to point out on this page is at the bottom here, a small box must be checked. And it says by clicking this box, you certify you've contacted your financial institution and authorized payment. The reason for this is that some financial institutions require pre-authorization. This is not always the case, but this box must be checked in order to proceed. Once all this information is completed, please click the Submit button in the lower right corner to proceed with putting in your password and getting your confirmation page. We will not be able to demonstrate this as part of this activity because we do not have a valid payment method 
for demonstration purposes. This concludes our demonstration of business tax return filing.